promise you, when you see that first sale, something's going to change in your in your head. You're going to have a light bulb going off. You're going to realize that this stuff really works. And then you're going to just get addicted to sending more and more stuff into your account. And then eventually, you can start moving on to other strategies. You can start outsourcing, running this, the whole business from a laptop, importing from China and all that good stuff. Welcome to the E-Commerce Freedom Podcast with your host, Oliver Denyer. Learn the practical steps you need to take to build a business you can run on your own terms. Escape the nine to five and work from anywhere in the world. Hey, how's it going? It's Ollie here. Man, it's been a while since I did a podcast, um, but a few days ago, uh, I'll tell you a quick story, right? A few days ago, I sent an email out to all the people who are on my newsletter, all right? Everybody who subscribed to my email newsletter. And I said, in the subject line, it said, help me. And if you're on my email newsletter, you probably saw this. Uh, and in, in the body of the email, I said, hey, uh, and then the first name of the person who it was addressed to. And I said, if you could meet me for coffee and ask me one question sit down with me for 30 minutes, ask me one question for us to talk about, what would you ask? And I got quite a few responses, right? It was on a Sunday when I sent out this email, uh, so I'm surprised people were actually checking their emails on Sunday, like I thought it was just me who did that. Uh, but we got loads of replies, and, and, and I started to notice a pattern in all these replies. And the number one thing that people wanted to ask me, thing that probably about 25% of all the people who, who actually replied me, was this. They said, how can I build an Amazon business, get started, if I've got barely any cash? So I thought to myself, right, look, I've got two options now. One, I could either message all of them back, right, and reply all of them, and give them, like, uh, a walkthrough of what I think you should do. And I thought, well, that could work, that'd be fun, have a nice chat with people. But what would be better is if maybe I could make a podcast episode dedicated to this topic, and then, look, I guarantee if 25% of the people messaging me want to know the answer to that question, I bet you there's tons of other people out there who want to know the answer to that question as well. How do you get started if you're broke? What's the best way to get moving if you really don't have a big pile of cash um, at your disposal right now? So this episode, I'm going to be telling you exactly what I think you should do to get moving and move from being at the point where you have no money to where you actually have a pile of capital at your disposal and you can really get moving to, to get momentum in your business, okay? So I want to start off really just by putting things in context. And here's the thing, right? This is going to sound super cheesy. I'm sure you've probably heard... You know, anyone who's successful uh, say the exact same thing. Uh, but in the beginning, before I started my Amazon business, I was broke as well. I, I had no money. Uh, I was working uh, in a bar. That's the, the only real kind of job I've ever had is working in a bar. Um, and I was earning less than a thousand pounds a month. I was on a zero hour contract. So some weeks I'd go in and there'd be no shifts for me. I'd just have no work that week. Right. And it was the frustration of having absolutely no money that's really compelled me to want to get moving with this business. So sorry if the story sounds cheesy, saying, you know, I started with nothing and now I've got a business and everything. But it's true, right? I was in that position. So I think I've got a real authority to actually be able to help you get out of being broke. And in this episode, I'm going to give you a ton of practical steps you can take. Um, to move past not having any money and, and just get out of that. And more importantly, I'm going to tell you what things I think are really important for you to focus on, for you to break past this barrier of finances being a problem. Because if you focus on the wrong things, you're going to fail, right? It doesn't matter if, what actions I tell you to do, you need to know which ones are the most important. So I'm going to make sure this is like tailor-made for somebody in your position, because I can relate. So let's talk about you for a couple seconds. If you're low on cash right now and you, you maybe you one of the other people, one of the people who messaged me um, asking how you should start with no cash. If you're in that position, then obviously you've got low funds right now. Maybe you're in debt. Maybe you've got credit card debt, um, overdraft. Um, maybe 
um, your bills usually are a struggle to pay. And maybe you have like a lot of stress around finances, like your rent comes in in the month and it's like, oh, how on earth am I going to be able to pay this? I have to use a lot of creativity, like moving money around and things and borrowing, trying to apply for more credit cards to pay for stuff. So money's kind of stressing you out, right? Also, you've probably got very low experience when it comes to selling on Amazon. If you've never really done it up until now, probably got low experience. Also, you're probably uh, not 100% sure if it really works. Like you've probably seen loads of success stories out there, but you might not be 100% sure whether it really works or whether it's all BS. And I think when you have money problems, like it makes any claim of people doing well with money seem like even more BS. Like it makes them into bigger red flags because it seems like almost impossible to achieve that kind of success. So I can relate to that as well. Also, you right now, you're probably not very risk averse. You're probably thinking, I've got a tiny bit of cash and I can't lose it. I can't just throw money down the drain and gamble with a business. And the most important thing for you right now is to see results as soon as physically possible, right? I think that's probably um, something that, that's important to you. You want to get something working, get it working fast so you can move forward. So what I want to do for you today is give you some simple action steps to enable you to be able to get that, get that first little bit of um, a result to get you motivated, to help you realize this stuff is really possible. And we want to focus all of our energy to, towards getting that before we even think about income goals or anything else um, to do with moving you forward. We want to get you some small results and then start thinking about how we can systemize things and outsourcing and whatever else. So let's start from the beginning. What do I suggest you do if you're broke right now, if you don't have much money, if money's an issue? Well, the number one priority you should have would be getting your first sale. Okay, on Amazon, getting your very, very first sale. So this means learning the basics. What are the basic things you need to learn about in order to make that first sale? Once you've done it once, you just need to rinse and repeat the exact same stuff you made to make that first sale, to make your second sale, your fifth sale, your tenth sale, your hundredth sale, your thousandth sale. It doesn't really change that much. The way you approach your business changes, but it doesn't, you know, it's the same kind of thing. So if I can get you all these basics in place, then then you'll be set up to continue to get more success. So what do these basics involve? Well, the best strategy for you right now, if you haven't got much money, is hands down going to be retail arbitrage. Okay, this is what I started with. This is what a ton of my students who are having major success started with. Um, this is what, like most people looking into Amazon who haven't got much money start with, and this has actually helped build um, financial freedom and started off the, the process of building financial freedom for a lot of people that I, I know and that I've taught. So this is the best strategy for you. Okay, so question is, you might be thinking, Ollie, that sounds cool, but what is retail arbitrage? Well, it's the simplest thing ever, okay? It's like this, right? Arbitrage has been going on for thousands of years. It's where you buy stuff from one marketplace and you sell it to another. So in uh, maybe 200 years ago, people would go down a trade route. They'd find a market stall that was selling maybe textiles or spices or something like that. And they'd look for a market trader who was selling them very, very cheaply, right? The trader would buy from the market stall trader um, some of the stock, take it down the trade route and sell it to another market and set up a stall selling the stuff that he bought from the previous market, right? That's kind of arbitrage. Now, you take this forward into um, nowadays, arbitrage has many forms, but what we'll be doing is going into retail stores, finding bargains, products that have been reduced by, you know, like a ton of money, like 80% off deals, buying products for super, super cheap, and then selling them for a profit on Amazon. Okay, so I've got a ton of students doing this. One of my students um, made £200,000 uh, in sales in his first 12 months with arbitrage. 
I made around about £850 in sales in my first week doing this stuff. If you find a really hot product whilst you're looking around for arbitrage um, opportunities, this stuff can really start to snowball your success. And it's not complicated. It doesn't require tons of skills. Um, you can get moving with this stuff really in a matter of days. You could like be finding products later on today if you are really motivated. So this is why I plan you do it. Don't start importing from China or anything like that or trying to look into some software or spending money. Just do arbitrage. Okay. So question is, how do you do it? Well, there's an app you can download. Um, on your phone right now, you can do it whilst you're listening to me talk, uh, called the Amazon Seller app. Um, download it right now if you're on iPhone or whatever it is, Android. Download it onto your phone. Now, with this app, the, the really interesting thing about this app is Amazon have built in a way for you to be able to find profitable stock to sell on your account using the app. Okay, so um, all you need to do is... On the app, you'll see once you open it, you can actually scan barcodes with your phone's camera, right? So take your phone, go up to uh, a product, scan the barcode, and it's going to pull up a load of information about what would happen if you were to sell it on Amazon. You're going to get the price you'd be able to sell it for and a load of other information about how many sellers there are right now um, and also some other stuff that we need to pay attention to. Okay, so get that app and then... It's pretty simple. All you need to do is wander around stores scanning products that will make you money. All right? Products that will make you profit. So what kind of products are we looking for here? Well, when any business, right, good stock in any e-commerce business is defined by two qualities. Quality number one, it's going to sell really, really fast. And quality number two is going to make a profit. So ideally, the faster stock sells and the bigger the profit, the better quality that stock is. Now, in the position that you're in, right, you haven't got much money, um, you know, you haven't got thousands and thousands in the bank that you can risk, you want your stock to be as good quality as possible because you don't have too much to play with. So you want to find products that will sell as fast as physically possible so you can get your money back quickly and with as big a profit as physically possible. So when you're running around stores looking for products to sell with the Amazon app, you want to find stuff that's really, really cheap that you can sell for a ton more. So like buy for like $5 or £5 and sell for like 40 bucks or whatever. And you want it to sell really, really, really fast. Okay, so... The way that we tell whether products sell really, really fast on Amazon is quite simple. Fortunately, there's something called the best sellers rank that every single uh, product on Amazon has. And the best sellers rank is kind of complicated if you've never heard of it before. Um, it might be a little bit complicated concept, but basically every single product on Amazon is on like a leaderboard. Picture it like a leaderboard, right? The further up the product is on that leaderboard, the more sales it generates every day. So number one on the leaderboard is the best-selling product in that particular category. So you can actually look at this best-seller's rank, right, this position the product has on the leaderboard to determine how fast a product sells. Product in like toys and games, uh, with, which is position number one, probably sells six or seven hundred times a day, right? Like the volumes on Amazon are absolutely crazy. So to make this super, super simple, you want to find products that have a very, very low bestseller rank. And for you, it's going to be especially low because you want to make profit as quickly as possible because you don't have a ton of money. So in terms of numbers, just to give you an idea, anything with a bestseller rank of below 50,000 is the kind of product you want to source. So you want products with a huge profit. You can see that using the Amazon seller app. Like You can type in the amount that you're going to buy the product for and it will tell you how much profit you'll make after fees. Plus... Very, very low best seller's rank. Okay, those two things mean that this product is going to be good for you. Now look, it's going to take a while for you to find products that have both of those qualities. You're probably going to have to scan maybe 100 products to find one that's going to be a good fit. But look, that's the thing. If you don't have money, you don't have resources, you don't have leverage yet, that's life. It's tough. I get it, right? You're going to have to spend a while looking for these kind of products. However, 
one product find could change your entire life. I found a product in the beginning of my journey. Um, it's called a call blocker. And if you've ever seen in my YouTube videos or webinars, I talk about this a lot because it really was amazing. Like I remember this so fondly. Um, I was scanning products using um, another app called Profit Bandit, which is very similar to the Amazon app, but you pay for it. Right in the beginning of my Amazon journey. And I stumbled across this one little product in a DIY store in the UK in London. Um, and it was reduced from 39 99 to five pounds, right? Unbelievably cheap. I scanned the product in and, and realized, you know, I would be making 30 pounds profit every single time this thing sold. Now I was right in the beginning of my journey. So at this stage I was like skeptical. Is this really going to work? I don't have much money to risk. I, I don't want to just spend a ton of money on these things and just see it not work. Right. Um, but it looked like it was going to be really good. And here's the thing. The best sellers rank was really, really low. So I thought to myself, look, this is going to sell like hotcakes. If this stuff really works, then this is going to be crazy. Okay, so uh, there was eight on the shelf, five pounds each. Um, but I only really wanted to spend like maximum 20 pounds on stock. So I thought, well, actually, that's quite a lot of money for me right now. If, if I was to throw that away, it's going to have a big effect on the food I can buy for the next few days and things. Um, so I just bought four. I spent 20 pounds on stock. I sent the products into Amazon's warehouse, right? Um, and within one hour of this thing hitting the Amazon warehouse, going live for sale, one of the products had already sold. I just made 30 pounds, right? So that's all of the money I spent on stock plus 20, sorry, plus uh, 10 pounds in profit. I was like, man, that is just unbelievably good. I cannot believe what has just happened. Then I was like, okay, well, it could have been a fluke, right? It could have just been a fluke. Maybe someone just stumbled across it and bought it. A couple minutes later, two more had sold, right? So there's me thinking, man, I cannot believe what is happening just now. I've just made like 90 pounds profit within just over an hour of these things hitting my account. And the next morning I looked at my account and all of them had sold, right? This was absolutely crazy. So this kicked off my Amazon career. I was like, man, this stuff is crazy. This stuff works really, really well. I'm going to keep looking for products to sell on my account. Okay, so one product can really genuinely change your life. Now, before you go out there trying to find the next call blocker, um, the next same uh, product that I found, um, I just want to warn you. That's very not typical. Uh, majority of the products I sell on my account, instead of having like a whatever it was, that, that would be like a, uh, a five times return on investment uh, or six times return on investment with the call blocker. You're going to be looking at more like a maybe a two times term, uh, return on investment or maybe a 1.5. So you'll buy something for five pounds or five dollars and sell it for like, you know, 10. Like it's never really going to be like as good as the call blocker that was a one-off so just to warn you like it's not always going to be crazy 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 good and that's okay profit is profit at the end of the day so just focus on finding products that are i've got huge profit margins and really really low bestseller ranking and you can really start to kick off your amazon selling career so we've talked a little bit about retail arbitrage about what you should do in the beginning and focusing all your energy on getting that first sale, buying as many products as you can in the beginning um, and um, getting that first sale. So now you might be brand new to this, right? At this stage, you might be thinking, Ollie, what do you mean you send stuff into Amazon's warehouse? Uh, what do you mean? You, what, what's the best seller? And can I really get that? How do I tell if stuff's profitable? You might have tons, tons more questions. How do I get these things answered? Well, the first thing I recommend you do uh, before getting into too much information overload is actually go ahead and set up your Amazon seller account. Uh, get this done. And then a lot of these questions that you have, you can actually ask Amazon seller support. Uh, they're, they're kind of, you know, hit and miss with how helpful they can be. But for basic questions, like you're covered, they will help you with everything. So go to sellercentral.amazon.com or sellercentral.amazon.co.uk, but wherever you're based, uh, sign up to the relevant one and sign up for an individual selling account. I wouldn't go professional just yet. It's £40 a month, and um, if you're low on cash, that, that can add up to, to be a little bit 
Um, so get a, a individual selling account, get your free Amazon seller app, and any basic questions that you have about this stuff, ask Amazon directly. They will help you. They want you to succeed at, at the end of the day. Once you've done that, you've got those two things set up, go to as many shops as you can around your area, scan as much stuff as you possibly can. And it's going to take a long time, right? It's going to take a long time for you to find products that have profit, that have low bestseller rank. But when you send your first shipment into Amazon's warehouse and you get your first sale, I promise you there is nothing that compares to that feeling. It's absolutely crazy. Okay, so look, you can, uh, if you're broke right now, you can ignore um, all of my advice um, past getting that first sale if it doesn't make you feel amazing. Okay, you can ignore everything I say after this, but you cannot just listen to this podcast hoping to be in a position where you can make more cash and not at least try to, to make this stuff work. Because I promise you, when you see that first sale, something's going to change in your in your head. You're going to have a light bulb going off. You're going to realize that this stuff really works. And then you're going to just get addicted to sending more and more stuff into your account. And then eventually, you can start moving on to other strategies. You can start outsourcing, running this, the whole business from a laptop, importing from China and all that good stuff later down the road. Okay. So let's say you've taken my advice, you've done some arbitrage, you've set up your account, you've sent the products in, you've made one sale, you made like two pounds profit, two dollars profit, woohoo, you know, you're rich now, right? You can retire, <laughs> not quite yet, right? But you've made that first sale, it, it feels amazing. What do you do next? Once you've got past this important point, and it is a really important point, I can't stress this enough, your confidence is going to soar. So once you've got that confidence, you realize this stuff actually works, right? Because that's a huge barrier, uh, especially if you're, um, you know, struggling financially, you will be skeptical about this kind of thing. Once you realize this stuff actually works, then you can move on to actually start making a plan to systemize this so you can turn it into an actual business. There's one thing where you just dawdle around shops, you know, half assed looking for products, trying to make things work um, whenever you feel like it. There's another thing actually turning this into a business that brings in real income, right? You don't want to just have another hobby. You want to have a real business. So once you've got your first sale, you feel confident, you know it works, on to the next stage, which is three to five days a week going out on scheduled scanning trips. Okay, at least an hour, just do your hour a day, right? Looking for products to sell on your account. So why is that important? Why, why do I say do three to five days a week? Well, here's the thing. Getting sales on your Amazon account, there's going to be like a certain level of randomness to it, right? In fact, all areas of Amazon business, there's a certain level of randomness. You could walk into a shop one day, uh, find absolutely nothing. Then the manager could suddenly decide to discount the entire shelf. The next day you walk in there, all of a sudden, you've got a gold mine. Right? There's a certain element of randomness. So the only way to combat this randomness and build a consistent income in your business is to buy, be uh, very, very consistent. Right? Be as consistent as you possibly can. So if you're going out shopping three to five days a week looking for bargains, looking for products to sell on your account, doing arbitrage then all of a sudden, the chances of you finding some good quality stock have gone up dramatically. You're um, moving the cards in your favor, right? Is that the expression? I have no idea. But the point is, you're taking the element of randomness out by being consistent as physically possible. Consistently getting products to sell on your account means there's more chance you'll find good stock. Consistently sending shipments into the Amazon warehouse means you'll be more likely to make consistent sales. The more stock you have in the warehouse, the more sales you'll be likely to make. Okay, so that brings me to the next point. You're going three to five days a week scanning products, sending them into your account, not spending heaps of money, just spare cash that you have. Um, any any money from around the house, money from under the sofa. Maybe sell some of the stuff that you have around the house on eBay so you can buy products to sell on your Amazon account. When you've got these, these products, send in one shipment of stock into your account every week. At the end of the day, businesses are set up with systems, right? Systems are what makes businesses go around. Let's think of uh, a really, really simple 
easy to imagine business like a lemonade stand. How do you make consistent sales and consistent income with a lemonade stand? Well, you need somebody making the lemonade um, and putting it on the stool, right? You also need people ordering in the lemons, the ice and the sugar. If somebody stops bringing in the lemons, all of a sudden your business collapse, right? If you haven't got someone taking the money for the lemonade, your business collapses. If any of those systems collapse, the whole business falls apart. In order to get consistent sales, everybody needs to be doing their part consistently to keep the sales coming in over the counter. So it's exactly the same thing in your Amazon business, right? Consistency is key. Send in one shipment every week. Systems very, very simple. It's just something that you do repeatedly to get a desired result. So in business, desired result is you want to make money. So do the thing that makes you money repeatedly. You have a system. So shipment every single week. Now, as you are building your business, it's consistently sending in stock into your account with retail arbitrage. Constantly be on the lookout for new areas to go and scan products. If you have a car, then great. Drive to new places, scan around. I never had a car. So I went on the train, on the bus. I tried to get there however I could. When I found a really huge haul of products somewhere near to me, I rewarded myself by uh, having the luxury of coming home in a taxi. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that was just an awesome experience for me back then. Um, but whatever it is, find new areas. Find new places to look for stock. The more areas that you have, the more... Uh, stores around you that you're scanning, the more likelihood it will be for you to find good products. So when you've got this up, you've got this plan, right, to, to start bringing in income, you're going to start to see sales happen on your account more often. It'll go from like one sale in a blue moon to or maybe just your first sale to maybe three sales a week. Man, you've got a bit of progress there. What's that? That could be, say, five pounds profit per sale, 15 pounds a week then maybe um, you might start to see four or five sales a week. And then it will go up to a sale a day, two sales a day. And that's how things start to snowball. So in order to make sure that your business really takes off from being just something random that's just a hobby, and you get the odd sale here and there, in order to make sure things really kick off and really snowball, and you're deliberately making this happen, measure everything. Okay, I mean, literally everything that you do, measure it. You can only ever improve what you can measure. Think about it like this, right? Imagine you're going to the gym and you want to start a new fitness regime. You want to put on muscle or you want to lose weight. If you just go in there, bang out a load of random exercises and then eat a load of random stuff for a week, how are you going to know which exercises you've improved on, how many calories you've eaten and your progress? If you don't stand on the scales every day to measure your weight, how are you going to know whether you've lost weight or gained it, whatever you want to do? You're going to have no idea what's going on. You just look in the mirror and be like, I just look kind of the same or I've got worse. Your business is exactly like that. You have to measure everything. So I want you to just get addicted to, to building spreadsheets. Okay, Have a spreadsheet for everything. How many products you're sending into your account each week? If you sent three products into your account last week, awesome you've you've done something you've taken some action next week try and make that a little bit better put in four products into your account just one better right any improvement is good maybe you found a store that's really awesome and you know that it's really powerful and you spent 10 minutes in that store and you found a whole basket worth worth of stuff maybe you went to another store you spent three hours in there and you found nothing well keep a log of the stores where um, you're getting the biggest harvest of products, right? And the most uh, pro productive use of your time. Track that stuff. Put that stuff in a spreadsheet. How many sales you're getting? Put that stuff in a spreadsheet. Track absolutely everything and just try and focus on improving each metric uh, as the weeks go by. That's how you start to build up traction. And as you're growing, right, as you're seeing more sales happen, as you... Um, are getting closer to your goals, right? And your plan is coming in, in together. Maybe you're starting to make more consistent sales now. I want to introduce you to this concept. Now, this is really, really important. This is something I was talking about with my inner circle uh, peeps on the last 
Inner Circle newsletter, the September, the most recent one. I introduced them to the concept of being consistent and persistent. We were looking at reasons why people quit Amazon and ultimately fail. Like, it's crazy how many people come into wanting to start an Amazon business. Like, even people who aren't broke, people who have, like, tons of money, they're ready to go, they've got every reason why they should be successful, and then just end up quitting. What are those main reasons? Well, it all boils down to, at the end of the day, most of the time, a lack of consistency and persistency. So if you can break through... Um, that barrier, right, if you can not be, uh, not have a lack of consistency and, and not um, lack in persistency, you'll have a much higher chance of succeeding. So what does that mean in practice? Well, there's a load of resources out there which can actually help you be as consistent as physically possible. One of those resources is an app called Coach.me. Now, this app was really, really paramount for me in the beginning when I was building my business and I, I was trying to get traction, trying to get things off the ground. And what it does basically is it gives you a notification every day. And that notification is customized by you um, to, to appear on your phone. And the whole point of that notification is for it to help you build a habit. Now, some people use it for things like flossing their teeth, like they want to floss their teeth consistently every day and they just keep forgetting. Well, with Coach.me, you can put a notification to come up every single day on your phone at a certain time, remind you to floss your teeth. If you do it that day, you press yes um, on the notification and it checks it as you have completed your task for that day. Now, after a few days, you start to build up a hot streak of whatever the task is that you're supposed to be doing. For you, it might be going out and scanning products sending in a shipment, whatever it is, you start to build a streak of the thing you're supposed to be doing. Now, once you build up this streak, something happens inside you. It's like a psychological thing. You don't want to break it. You want to keep this streak, right? So this simple app was something that really helped me build consistency in my business because you have to be sending in products all the time. It just gives you more chance of getting more sales. So get the coach.me app, Use it, customize it, put a notification in there to help you build um, consistent action. And being persistent is uh, easier said than done. Like there's going to be times when you're working in your business trying to go from being completely broke to having a ton of money where you feel like you're just failing and things just aren't working. Well, being an entrepreneur and running a business, 97% of what you do is basically failing, right? I fail so many times in a day. The amount of times I launch products and they just don't work as well as I wanted them to. The amount of times where I'll launch a campaign, some kind of marketing campaign, and it will just fail. The amount of times when I've hired people and they just haven't been right for the job. It happens. Failure is just part of building a business. You have to fail. The more you fail, the more you end up succeeding. 97% of what you do is going to be failure. You're going to be looking for products in stores. 97% of what you look at is going to be the wrong type of product. But if you can go through that 97% of failure, you'll get to that 3% that nobody gets to access. How, many pe uh, how much percentage of the population do you think have a Lamborghini? Or a really, really beautiful house? Or the perfect spouse? It's probably somewhere around 3% because most people won't go through that 97% of failure to get to that 3% of success. Yes, yeah, some people are born into wealth and they get given everything and blah, blah, blah. But I bet they'll have things that they want, uh, you know, relative to them, that only 3% of those type of people will want to have as well, right? It's, it's all relative. So the point here is you're going to fail a load. But build failure into your plan. Accept that you're going to be failing. Fail forward. On a daily basis, I have failures in my business. But overall, I've done way more than a million online in the past couple, in the past couple years. It's not that like I don't fail. It's just I don't care. I love failure. It's just part of the stepping stone 
to achieving my next goal. So just be aware of this. Okay, fail forward. Don't uh, think that everything that you do is going to be a win, and that's okay. Another thing uh, on the topic of being consistent and persistent is be aware of your limiting beliefs. Have you ever heard of uh, the term limiting belief? Has that ever um, been addressed to you before? Did you know that these things exist? What is a limiting belief? A limiting belief is basically something that, that you believe to be true that ultimately prevents you from moving forward in life. Now, they're very, very sneaky. Um, and, and one fact of life is that everybody has them. Everybody has limiting beliefs. I have limiting beliefs. Now, the difference between me or somebody else who's had success and someone who hasn't is that I'm aware of the fact that I have limiting beliefs and I make every conscious effort that I possibly can to move past them. Now, let me give you some examples of what limiting beliefs are, right? How, how they actually manifest themselves. For example, a limiting belief might be something like, I can't be successful in business because I'm too young. Or, I can't be successful in business because I'm too old. Or, it's because I'm a woman. Or, because um, I'm too stupid. Or, I'm too broke. Or, I'm not business-minded, whatever that means. Right? As if learning how to build a business isn't a skill you can learn. Right? Limiting beliefs are things that you, you just hold dear to yourself for some strange reason and you think they're true, but they're actually stopping you from moving forward. So to conquer these things, the first step is just to be aware of what they are. As you're going through the day-to-day -day, uh, process of building your business and you're thinking about um, you know, really wanting to make uh, the, the next move to hit your goals... Just listen to what your mind is telling you you can or can't do. You might hear yourself saying things like, hmm, maybe this Amazon thing was just a massive scam. Hmm, maybe I'm not really going to be able to do this business in the way I wanted. Or maybe something like, people from my part of the world can't make a success of this business. Just be aware of what those beliefs are and just... Maybe write them down or just be aware that those things aren't necessarily 100% true. Be aware of these limiting beliefs. And then the next step is to consciously make an effort to tear them apart. If you believe that, I don't know, somebody of your gender, ethnicity, age can't be successful, go on YouTube and find somebody who's exactly the same as you, whatever... Uh, um, rationality you put together of why you couldn't do it someone is exactly the same as you and find someone who's done it do anything you can to brainwash yourself and break through these limiting beliefs because this is going to be one of the key um, differences between you being successful and you failing getting through these limiting beliefs is a huge huge part of it and then finally to help you be as consistent and persistent as possible before you get moving Write down whatever the goal is that you have in your mind, the motivation for you to build this business, the motivation for you to listen to this podcast. Whatever it is, write down that goal on a piece of paper. Maybe you want to get out of debt in the next 12 months. Maybe you want to be able to quit your job. Maybe you want to be able to travel. Maybe you just want to be able to have more financial freedom, maybe more time freedom. Whatever it is, write that thing down on a goal card and look at it every single day as you're building your business. Seems like a silly thing, I know, it seems stupid. But I promise you, just by doing that, as you're building your business, as you're scanning products, as you're sending in products into your account, it will remind you why you're going through all this, uh, all these challenges, right? You're going to have, like I said, you're going to fail forward. You're going to fail a load of times. Looking at this card will remind you why you're doing it. And it will put a positive spin on the failure, and if you can do that, train yourself to see failure as something positive because you're working towards your goals, that's one of the biggest differentiators between people who succeed and fail, right? It's not just the, the, the fact that um, 
successful people have it lucky or whatever. It's just that they're able to fail and just be okay and just carry on. Being very focused on what your goal is um, is, is a very easy hack you can use to kickstart that process. Awesome. So this should give you enough to get going. Please go get that app. Set up your Amazon seller account. Get scanning. Send some products into your account. As you start to get sales, just reinvest all of your profits back into the business. Keep growing it as fast as you possibly can. And I really can't wait to hear about you getting your first sale, getting that milestone. Maybe your next milestone could be getting 10 sales, 100 sales, 1,000 sales. Who knows? I'm super, super excited to hear about you putting this stuff in to practice. And if you do, when you start to get some results, shoot me a message at support at ecommercefreedom.com uh, and tell me about it. I love hearing these stories. So today I've got a crazy, crazy freebie for you. And this is something that I think you're really, really going to love. Um, it is a free course that I've put together just for you just to help you move forward with confidence and um, put this stuff into action. It's my fast start guide for getting your first sale on Amazon in less than two weeks. Okay, if you wanna grab this fast start guide, then you've got a couple options. You can go to info.ecommercefreedom.com forward slash fast start guide. That's info dot ecommercefreedom.com forward slash fast start guide or you can go check out the show notes and everything for this podcast episode at ecommercefreedom.com forward slash 11 that's the number 11 or the word 11 ecommercefreedom.com forward slash 11 you'll see the show notes for this the link to the fast start guide the transcript for this and everything all you got to do is enter your email um, jump on my email uh, newsletter i will send you the fast start guide login info and everything for free to your email address and it will teach you how to set up your Amazon account, how to find products to sell on it, how to analyze them in less than 60 seconds, how to make a shipment and send products into the Amazon warehouse. Super, super, super valuable stuff. Somebody uh, messaged me a couple months ago who had used my fast start guide, nothing other than my fast start guide, and he has done £50,000 in sales in his first six months just using this free guide didn't buy it didn't give me any money didn't give me a penny for any of my courses or anything like that just use the fast start guide and a couple of my podcasts so it proves that this stuff will work if you put it into action and you take a ton of action listen to the stuff i'm talking about today some of it might sound crazy like why am i writing stuff down on a goal card why have i got this weird coach dot me app why is ollie telling me to go out and deliberately fail well Look, this stuff is coming from someone who's been where you are. I've been broke before. I know how it feels. I know how it feels to um, feel limited by having no money. And I know how determined you are to, to move past it. So please take uh, my advice um, and use this guide and go out there and just make your first sale. If you do nothing else, just go out there and make your first sale. If you do not get inspired, motivated, excited when you see that first sale happen, even if you only make two pounds profit, if what that sale represents doesn't move you forward, then you can quit. You can ignore everything I say. You can go bad mouth me on social media. But until that point, please listen to what I've said and give this stuff a shot can't wait to hear about your results awesome so thanks so much for listening to uh, this edition of the e-commerce freedom podcast remember always go to ecommercefreedom.com uh, to check out new blog posts and new stuff that i'm putting together for you and um, there'll be opportunities on there to jump on my newsletter to hear about promotions and free trainings i'm handing out get updates about this podcast subscribe uh as well if you're listening to this on itunes or stitcher or google play wherever it is um to get more episodes to your phone or laptop whatever else thanks so much for listening today i uh, hope you have an awesome day whatever you do keep believing i'll speak to you very very soon